This Liberty Sports Update is brought to you by Beacon Credit Union. Uh, excited about our uh, non-conference uh, schedule. Obviously, uh, it's daunting, and I'm not sure how excited I'll be uh, once November or December come, here, come around. But um, ask Stephen Gonzalez, our SID, to do a little bit of fact-checking, and uh, it's the most non or the most Power 5 schools that we've played uh, in the Division One era. You throw Georgetown in there, and that's – four uh, high major or reputable programs. Out of that, at Navy and at Kent, we are really challenging our guys. Uh, but it's intentional. In a year in which uh, we have some transition, obviously, to a new league, uh, I just felt like uh, it was already tough. But when we went to the A-Sun, I felt like one or two more games might better prepare us for what I think will be a really competitive league season. So I know our guys are excited about it. Uh, we, we let them know some of the opponents that, uh, that we're facing, and uh, I think there's a, a great sense of urgency in trying to get prepared for 2018-19 in our season. Coach, uh, what, what made you feel like that this team was ready for this, this type of schedule? I'm not sure we are ready, uh, but these are games that this group wants to play. Uh, I think when you're, when you're at a place in your program – where you feel like you can make a postseason and if you get the postseason, you can win a game, you will have had to do it <laughs> before you get there. And with, with as many returners as we have, and, and I really like our, our, uh, our new guys, I, I just think it, let's challenge ourselves early and, uh, and see how well it can prepare us for, for the A-Sun. How difficult is it to get quality non-conference opponents to come – play in Lynchburg versus being able to travel and play four power four uh, power teams. Last year was such an aberration to have that many home games for a quote unquote mid major. Uh, it it doesn't happen. Look around the country and you won't see a team that's that played as many home games as we did, especially of the quality that we played and obviously that was uh, enhanced by us being able to host the Paradise Jam which we were very grateful for. So it's, it's really difficult, the equation, to get really quality home games uh, as well as balance your schedule. It's, it's a major task. So what we've embarked on doing is to go play some neutral games. And, uh, and then we play, we're playing a couple of, of high majors, obviously. And then our home and home with Navy. And uh, down the road next year, we have, we're starting a home and home with Radford. Navy will return. So we've got a little bit of a baseline for a uh, future schedule. But... Uh, in this transition with, uh, with the move from the Big South to the A-Sun, uh, we, <laughs> we scrambled a little bit late. Obviously, UCLA, Blue Blood, that's a notable game. How did that game come about? Yeah. Uh, Dwayne Broussard, uh, who was on my staff or our staff at New Mexico, is now an assistant at UCLA. And uh, we were actually hoping to get Ryan Hippler uh, back to Southern California. And uh, Ryan's closer to Southern California, but just not in a Flames uniform. Uh, but all of our guys still wanted to play the game. And we, uh, we actually had it scheduled last year and had to change it. So a uh, chance to play the Bruins in Poly. I've played and coached there. It's, it's a phenomenal venue. In Poly, they don't celebrate any conference championships. The only banners that hang from that arena are national championships. So when you look up, it, uh, you get real quickly in your mind, whoa, this is a place that has some – some incredible tradition and, and a great history. So that'll be tremendous for our guys. Southern California in December may not be a bad equation. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, we're looking forward to that. And Georgetown is another blue blood that I think our guys will be really excited to play. And hopefully uh, Liberty Nation or Flames Nation will travel well to D.C. and uh, get a chance to play in, uh, in their arena. How much do you feel like what you guys did last year at Wake Forest – kind of prepares your guys to know that, you know, yeah, you're going, you're looking at the championship banners, you're looking at all of that stuff, but you've gone on the road against a high major opponent and won already. Yeah, I think last year having the benefit game in uh, at the Siegel Center in Richmond and playing at Wake Forest I thought was was really good for our guys. I think it established some some confidence to be able to win on the road, and we did so at Georgia State and, uh, and won a couple of games in the league. Uh, at some difficult venues, places we hadn't won in a long time, Winthrop and Asheville. So uh, I, all that went into the decision to upgrade our schedule in the non-conference this year. And, again, you know, Scotty James is a, is a kid that 
you know, he wants to play those kind of games. Lavelle Cavill, Caleb Holmesley, those, the guys that have been here since our inception, uh, they've, they've endured and uh, been through some growing pains and felt like it was a chance to reward them with a challenge that was grand. And we'll see how we fare. You mentioned Radford beginning a home and home with them next year. Have you eagerly sought out uh, fellow big, former Big South opponents to try to schedule home and homes with them to, uh, just to make you know, travel a little bit easier? Yeah, we <laughs> we've looked at some bus trips and uh, and we're we're trying to schedule those. Uh, a lot of it depends on the MTE, the exempt tournament that we decide upon playing in, and we'll schedule around that as well as having uh, Radford start a series here and Navy return a game from this year. Uh, a couple of teams on the schedule that you've got close connections with on the coaching staff with Treveca and Omar Mance there, and then obviously Vanderbilt. Is that something you try to keep those games going with uh, former coaches or guys you got close relationships? Well, I love Coach Mance, and we did it because he wanted to play at Division One, and obviously I want to help he and, and uh, his staff, his program, um, do whatever they need to do to help build their program. So, uh, yeah, that was – now, hopefully he'll remember that – we did him a favor and not come in here and and uh, and be too good against us. But uh, I know they'll be excited about that game, and so will we. And then the Vanderbilt thing, Bryce Drew is a friend of mine, and Matt Olinger, obviously, he spent a lot of years here. So that just came together as a part of a tournament, and uh, and we get some home games in return for going there. So it made sense. Um, they have a phenomenal recruiting class. As a matter of fact, we talked about Georgetown and UCLA, but Vanderbilt's recruiting class is tremendous. And – uh, I know how good of a coach he is because I coach Bryce Drew. So, uh, terrific program, and they'll be a tough out, as well as uh, a game that I think people will uh, will not know any any significance to is the game in uh, Huntsville, Alabama, against the Crimson Tide. It's uh, in the Rocket City shootout. Uh, it sold out last year, and, uh, and I anticipate uh, it being a, a game, again, that our guys will have a lot of fun playing in because the atmosphere will be tremendous. The Alcorn State and Savannah State, ga State games, are those part of that tournament with Vanderbilt you just alluded to? Yes. Yep. Uh, the Georgia State game, uh, that, that's that been a uh, – not a rivalry, but a fun series between uh, uh, the Flames and Georgia State. Is that something that you'd like to continue, even being that they're seven hours away? Yeah, any home and home against a quality opponent that we can get, we're going to take. And, uh, and they were willing to do it. We were really fortunate to – come back from a, a large deficit last year and sneak out of Atlanta with a win. Um, they went to the NCAA tournament, and they've got nearly everyone back. So it's another challenging game for us. But, again, my hope is that we, we get really well prepared for what I think will be a really challenging A-Sun schedule. And, again, I think that's every coach's hope in the non-conference. Some at the high major level are afforded the opportunity to play a lot of bye games and – slowly build confidence, we're not afforded that same opportunity. So why not take a swing at it and see if we can't get an extra base hit by uh, – I know it's playoff season in sept September, guys. So uh, so that we're, that's what we're doing. A logistics question when it comes to the A-Sun and travel and, and navigating through that. It's going to be different coming up this season. So what plans are there in place? I know there's some double headers with the women's teams and et cetera. Really uncharted territory for us. I. Like, I think some of the venues that we're going to are great in terms of, man, those are destination cities. Guys will want to be there, warmer weather. Nashville's terrific. Atlanta, all that. But, it, you guys, there's such a different dynamic when you're coming home after a game on the bus, and most of the guys are asleep because it's three to five hours usually on the bus, to stay in the night, sleeping in a hotel, getting up the next morning at 6 a.m. for early check-in, flying, trying to make it to class, and then going to practice. It's just a way different dynamic. And if you don't charter a bunch of those trips, and I think, again, I think you put your team at a competitive disadvantage. So uh, we're, we're just going to have to embrace it, get used to navigating through it, and see how we do. And in the future, we'll make some decisions based on how we, uh, how we perform during the conference season.